even though we are here to talk about whatever we want, whatever we want to talk about. So you're not here to listen to us talk about all of that. You're here to listen to another episode of the Black Tower podcast. We are, uh, believe it or not, a Wheel of Time podcast. I know, shocking considering how many tangents we go on, but we do occasionally, uh, as Twatcast learned the hard way, spend at least 10 minutes talking about Wheel of Time and the rest of the time (laughs) selling our hair for money. Oh, shit. At most 10 minutes. At most. (laughs) So we're glad that you can make it here for maybe 10 minutes of Wheel of Time and the rest we're going to auction off. I don't know, something. I don't know. No, we're not really, but. Body hair. We're going to auction off Daniel and Josh's butthole. (laughs) Did you know about this, Daniel? (laughs) Congratulations, you just found out. I have have somebody who might have a problem with that. Oh, I think we all have somebody that might uh, have a problem with that. I hope we fetch a good price. I mean, that's my, for the that's right my amount. I just hope I fetch a good price. <laughs> As we learn from American All Dad, for the right negotiable. price, you can. Re- yeah, for the right price, according to American Dad, you can get a new size six sphincter. So, I mean, the American Dad does say a lot, though. Is that like the little, um, the little like rod that. that they have for rings that they put the ring on, and wherever it stops is how big the ring is? Is there just one of those for like butthole sizes? I don't. Want to know? Oh, I haven't hit Andrew, my forties yet, so I don't. Andrew, I don't do anything in that department Andrew? with the doctor yet. <laughs> Andrew, the answer is yes. Obviously, someone has made such a thing. Whether it's medical or for a particular kink, that's the real question. <laughs> so they were nice to like round the of tip. time. The oh, yeah. of time. All right. Whole sizings in the wheel of time. Uh, but oh, time. we're not talking. Oh, we're not talking about Goblin today. There there's is a different book. a butthole sizing in wheel of time. I'm sorry you missed it. Well, we're, we're talking about Goblin later. That's not this episode. So we'll talk about the butthole of time another time. <laughs> all right. No, he's, all right. The ass- <laughs> he's the asshole of time. Okay. Fair Slightly enough. Slightly different. Yeah. Uh, so. Uh, before we get so, into exactly what we're talking about, we have, uh, speaking of uh, butthole sizes, we have things to plug. Yeah! Um, <laughs> if you haven't already, make sure you meander on over to blacktowerpod.com. <gasps> it is your one-stop shop, your easy access site, if you will, uh, for all things Black Tower. You can find the Discord invite, the Patreon stuff. Uh, there's even some forums there, and I'm pretty sure Moshadi was the last one to go streaking naked through there. Um, so go see what that's all about. Not as bad or worse than you think it is. It depends on your dirty mind, I guess. Um, it's also where you can find our ever loving and ever generous sponsor, uh, or at least a link to our sponsor uh, over at the crystal barista. So make sure you go and check out uh, our website and then go and check out the crystal barista. Definitely follow Crystal Barista on Facebook and Instagram uh, if you like shiny click clacks uh, for whatever reason, because there's some really dope deals there. And I got some some cool stuff here from one of those deals. I got some pretty cool like bookends. There's one right there that you can't really see and another one over there that you can see even less of. There's also some opalized ammonite, uh, which is slightly near and dear to my heart because first time we went hounding but the crystal barista that was for was opalized what ammonite. We went for and we go- that was it. Yeah, and we got to watch uh, Daniel narrowly avoid potentially his first ever hernia, hauling a whole ass big <laughs> ammonite up a hill by himself. So, Did you guys ever sell that? Did that actually go, was, like, go was, for I, a good price? I was impressed. I don't know. I, I honestly don't know. We should find out just because I want to we know. We should find my out. pride. You should find heart. out what your, your efforts are worth. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, shit. Uh, but Damn. while you're surfing the interwebs and looking at really cool people to do really cool things, make sure you go to newcreationsbygen.com as well. Uh, New Creations is a fantastic shop run by Jen and Rob. You know Rob from Weekly One News. They have a whole bunch of Wheel of Time inspired memorabilia and a merchandise that you can get, as well as a whole host of content creators merch that you can get there, including the Frosty Mugs, 
uh, which you can see some of hanging out back there in the background, a Daniel screen, if you're watching us on YouTube or anything. Um, pretty cool. You can get the these whole set. right here. Yep. These, and, these mugs. Yep. And if nothing else, you can go ahead and start looking at maybe what mugs you would like because we have a habit of giving away uh, at least eight or so every year at what a holiday towards the end of the year. Correct. So go shop now. Kate Reading and Michael Kramer have mugs up there as well. And uh, word through the grapevine is that there are more on their way. So definitely go and check that out. Hi. Final plug. Um, you know we're pretty fairly involved in WatCon. Make sure if you're going to walk on, go ahead and make sure you have your hotel because the hotel block is filling up. It is almost full. So if you have not gotten your hotel already and you want to stay at the venue hotel, um, go ahead and do that. That is the Marriott, Columbus Marriott Northwest, Northeast. I should know this. <laughs> Hey, editor Andrew, make sure you edit that out to make it sound like you do know exactly <laughs> what hotel you're going to be staying at. Perfect. Yeah. It is the Marriott Columbus uh, Northwest. There is a link to book now with the block rate on watcon.com. And that's to edit that. That was that was just you double checking on something you did actually know. I like it. Hey. Um, yeah, see, yeah. Oh, no, uh, so. Step Venue, what are you doing? Don't fill me up. <laughs> oh, boy. Whoa. Oh, boy. <laughs> uh, but uh, any of the other questions you have, you can either find answers to or you can find a way to ask uh, the staff at WatCon those questions at WatCon.com. And Watcon. keep your Com. eyes peeled on the WatCon official social medias. Because there is more information being uh, released within the relative in their future, uh, which you probably figured out because we're, you know, really close to the con actually happening. Less than two months as of when we're recording this now. Significantly less Yay. than two months. Correct. Yes. So. Indeed. Plugs, Indeed. reminders, and Indeed. selfless promos out of the way. Uh, yeah, I think it's probably... Good time for a, a Spurler condom. Spurler warning. Spurler warning. Let's make sure you're protected for all the taint that's about to come. Giggity. Yeah. Welcome to the Black Tower, a Wheel of Time podcast. All right, let's check here. Okay. This podcast episode will be spoiling books one through. I mean, let's be honest here. Whatever Josh lets slip. <laughs> So how about you pull that spoiler condom all the way on? <laughs> anyway, quit your whining. The last book came out in 2012. He was actually a ghost, and Rosebud was the name of his sled for creator's sake. <laughs> Damn it! I haven't seen Speaking that of more shoddy. <laughs> there you go. Oh, I love that one. All right. All right, Daniel. so we're spoiler free. No, or whoever. No, what are we talking spoiler about? Spoiler free. Today? We're spoiler. We're spoiler warned, not spoiler free. You have <laughs> Give a spoiler warning. We're going to spoil everything. Oh, so we're spoiler free. Okay. Yep. So what's up, Andrew? Uh, what are we talking about? What are we talking know. about? Today, we are doing another in our series of. Uh, basically breakdowns in the wheel of time whether those be nation breakdowns whether those be uh aja breakdowns whether those be uh religion breakdowns lots and lots of breaking down because that's what we do here at the black tower we break things down so that we can build them back up so today we are in fact doing another aja breakdown and we are going to be talking about the most Let's say negotiation heavy Aja, the gray Ooh. Aja, the ones who uh, who create the treaty or who negotiate the treaties, who bully, I mean, get uh, nations to agree to said treaties, <laughs> uh, uh, and then uh, uphold the said treaties once they are created. That is their sort of 
individual mandate as Grey sisters. Uh, they do lots of other things uh, because they are Aes Sedai, and Aes Sedai never really just do one thing, but that is sort of the Grey Aja's intimate and humble purpose is to keep the wheels on the bus spinning and have none of the kids in the back fighting each other. <laughs> oh, I did forget one thing. Uh, oh. I have to say a thank you to one, the conniving mind uh, or assistance of Daniel, but also a very oh, special yes. and nice thank you to uh, Spare of Time uh, for this wonderful gift I oh, received yes. in the mail. This canvas print meme of me in the iconic Titanic scene of Draw Me Around one, of your, one, one of your French Girls. girls. Yeah. So uh, if you're listening live, so I have If you guys want to see that, go to our YouTube. Yes, that too. You can find it. Uh, you can see it obviously in the video because I just showed it on YouTube. And if you're listening live and want to see it now, it is in the discussion channel for our patrons. Um, and I'm, I might have posted it in common room. I don't know. I just post things and then forget where they are. Yeah, so that's fine. But yeah, um, and I like the garage because we get to see their their purpose Sorry. potentially uh, transform a little bit by the end of the series from the. Uh, I was trying to think of a way to bring in treaties and stuff with an with like a word that starts with R, and then like lead that into recon, but I can't right now. So the yeah, ramifications of royal regalia. Let's go with that. I don't, it doesn't doesn't really work, but we're gonna go with that. Of royal regalia. Yeah. Um, regalia. And unfortunately, no. Uh, responding to our live chat here, I do not have a fireplace for that because I live in an apartment, and generally fireplaces and apartments are bad fucking ideas. You get the bad fucky wacky when you put the fireplace in that apartment. Yeah. They never get properly cleaned out, and uh, people are irresponsible. Fireplaces and buttholes. They're very similar in that regard. I mean, it's kind of not directly <laughs> over, but it's it's kind of over my statue over in Goku. Uh, so there was a bit of a fireplace, not anymore. Rest in peace. All right, for you Demon Slayer fans. All right, all right. So, but it's right next Grey to Grey Aja. Yeah. There it is. There it is. So Grey Aja, they have their their politicians. They are diplomats. More diplomats than negotiators. But yeah. Mediators, if you will. I guess it does say in the Watt fandom or Watt wiki, the yeah, fandom.wiki.com.grayaja.slash backslash forward slash HTTP. Um, it does say that they are dedicated to politics and meditate med mediation. Jesus <laughs> fucking Christ. Andrew, you didn't even know isn't that just not isn't English. that just like holy masturbation? I mean Whoa. politics and mediation. All right. Yeah. It has been storming here lately. I probably well, shouldn't make jokes like that. I'm gonna get struck down. <laughs> you think about it though, but you think about it though, I mean they Yes, to prevent war is 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 noble, right? You don't want people killing themselves. You don't want people killing other people. So if they can come in and negotiate a treaty that everybody's happy with and say, you know, oh, yeah, you know, you don't have to go to war. It's okay. And uh, like one would think that one would say, hell, yeah, this is great. But it turns out they're... Uh, their motives are not always uh, uh, totally altruistic. Um, they, well, they also very much enjoy uh, increasing their influence and their uh, notoriety. Well, and I was just I mean, about to say that ostensibly saving lives, stopping wars, uh, and negotiating treaties is a good thing. That, that absolutely, yes. ostensibly, those things are good things. However, we all know, um, having lived in the world and seen how treaties often work, is that typically it's <laughs> not a consensus that both sides are happy with. It's just a right. consensus that both sides aren't angry about. 
Yeah. Which is and it's interesting too, like the, the range of their effectiveness. Yeah. The, the range of their effectiveness is is pretty interesting too, because you definitely have members of the Grey Aja that are like the legal team of a certain pirate captain. And then you have those that yes. are like the legal team of a certain person that's an adult and still right. shits the bed. So Yep. Do you know you do I, have I think it's I think it's fun because you start you start getting into the difference between the ethics of negotiating these treaties as well as you know like the morality like i feel like the gray aja is probably in competition with the white aja when it comes to you know in terms of like moral ambiguity like there is there's no right you know the right answer is no war and score ourselves some points so it doesn't matter what we have to do to make that happen that's what we're going to do and that's what we're going to make happen well and again also <laughs> you're talking about a third ostensibly uh unbiased <laughs> group coming in to go ahead and right. talk this out and to make them make this work they are the arbitrators. They are the mediators. They are the unbiased, unpolitical party who is coming in, uh, looking at both right. sides and saying, okay, let's talk this out. We are as objective as possible. Except yeah. that again, they're Aes Sedai. <laughs> and so the Aes Sedai also are looking for their own footholds. They're looking for yes. their own uh, ability to get something out of these treaties to input themselves into what is going on for political gain, for power gain, for the good of the White Tower. And on top of that, or they the also know that good. they already have a certain amount of influence so they know that they can jam certain ideas down people's throats because those people <laughs> are just going to accept them because they're Aes Sedai, which now means that that's not really a an objective, unbiased arbitrator in the middle. Now you're talking about someone with all of their own hang-ups and motives and power dynamics. And again... I'm not saying that that's not always true because it just kind of does exist. You're never going to be able to put in someone into a situation who is utterly unbiased. But with the Aes Sedai, it's like a pretty strong, you're not actually nearly as unbiased as people would like to think you are. Yeah, I mean, and there's an incredible there... amount of unrecognized power that comes along with the trusted mediators. Um, yes. Oh, yeah. Just look at our own world history, for example. There's a number of countries that have been the in-between mediators for preventing conflicts, for uh, the continuation of conflicts, um, the resolution of conflicts, and just normal average day-to-day -day trading uh, and contingencies. And it's it's a well-known practice that like uh, two parties negotiating will frequently try to either go through a third party or get third, fourth, sixth, 150th parties involved. Um, if you bring it to like the full UN or something like that. Oh yeah. But when you're trusted yeah. to be the voice of reason and mediation, then your words carry a lot of weight. You carry in a, a lot of intrinsic power because if you say, I think this is best for the both of you and you have both sides convinced that you're operating for their collective interests, they're far less likely to consider uh, the negative ramifications. And yep. There's been plenty of times throughout history, and I'm sure plenty of times throughout the history of the Wheel of Time, where that has proved to be detrimental uh, to other nations. I would not be a bit surprised to find out that the fact that a full sister Aes Sedai resides with the Queen of Andor is a byproduct of a mediation negotiation between Andor and Kyrian. Karian. Or for example, yeah, no, that's yeah. that's a really good example of something where it does not feel like the Aes Sedai are actually nearly as unbiased as they would like people to believe, and as people do yep. sometimes believe. Yeah. Well, it's interesting too how much some of the some of the duties, um, not by definition but by effect, yeah. bleed yeah. over. Because if you're the if you're one of the main mediators, then one. 
if you're trying to instill a sister to constantly be in a location like the Lion Throne, then now the Reds want to work with you to get a benefit, to have a Red Sister be the one to represent the White Tower at the Sun or the Lion Throne. Yep. Um, yeah. So you have all that power where one, you have power over other sisters to force them to work with you if they want to get some perceivable gain through you. But you also have an incredible avenue for the gaining of intelligence, which is something the Blues would be incredibly interested in and incredibly want to be part of. I can imagine there being a massive argument discussion in the Hall of the Tower while the Greys are negotiating this treaty between Andor and Kyrian or Andor and wherever that results in a sister, uh, a full Aes Sedai sister being in the, uh, or at the Sun Throne at all times or Lion Throne. I keep saying the Sun Throne. That's the other place. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and I can see the Reds and the Blues arguing back and forth. And I almost guarantee that the, the sheer lack of number of Red uh, Omerlin uh, was used as a, as a negotiation tactic to let a red sister go and stand beside more gays for so long. But these are the kind of things that the mediators have not only the power to do, but generally the desire to do, because power over others, even if it seems small in the time, is actually an incredibly large and effectual amount of power for them to, to wield. And if that's your whole shtick, we do the mediation, then there's going to be an in intrinsic amount of trust in you to do this and whenever you say yes or no in these situations most of the time ultimately people are going to side with you yeah you know it's interesting you know you, you're talking about like trust and power and one of the key one of the hallmarks internally of course they would never advertise this but one of the key hallmarks of the gray aja is you know, they mediate over treaties. They they are sometimes asked to reside um, over a, a criminal case. You know, they're sometimes mm -hmm. asked to serve as a judge or something like that, evaluating someone's guilt or innocence. Um, but in all of that, they ensure that they do it in such a way that the White Tower or the Grey Aja receives that measure of power of notoriety mm -hmm. of of you know of fame if you will and so the white tower actually probably has the gray aja to thank in in many many ways for its role and its power in in the west in 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 the world because Yes, there are channelers in other places. Um, we've got female channelers out in the waste. We've got female channelers in the Sea Folk. We got channelers over in Wait, the Shara. Channel? We got channelers over in Shan Shan. Uh, <laughs> some of them, um, but but none of them have the I don't know presence. None of them have the reverence, the I'm not reverence. None of them have like this, this, this almost position of, 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 of fear or awe. Whereas an Aes Sedai walks into the room and everybody goes, what's she going to do? Like she can hear people a mile away. She can throw lightning at you and blah, blah, blah. And we don't we see a different sort of reverence we see a different sort of respect for channelers and other societies so we have I think that's we actually probably the have the gray word. aja i like you but i think that's actually the wrong word cuz i would definitely call something along the lines of the wise ones as being revered and the Aes Sedai as being feared well that's where i was going that's 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 yeah what i was trying to no, say no i i agree with you but you said Aes Sedai is revered and i was like ah. oh I mean, no, it's no, still no. Yeah, just, no. like it just means that there is some degree of reverence it doesn't always have to be positive yeah. reverence it, it well and that's yeah. but 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 Not you guys wrong. get what i'm saying there is a particular yeah, yeah, yeah. feel when people are dealing with Aes Sedai oh there is yeah, a that's particular a type of attitude point, right in our live yeah. chat someone said it's like dealing with the Bene Gesserit and uh, yeah 
absolutely. There's there's a measure of fear. There's a measure of respect. There's a measure of awe. There's a measure of oh shit, you know, I got in trouble and now I got to go to the principal's office. Like, it's a very unique interaction, and it is one that is unique to the White Tower. Correct. And where you've that got I the completely... Grey Aja interacting with the world in their specific flavor the white tower probably has the gray aja to thank for that particular reputation if mm -hmm. you will if you, no i, as it I agree yeah i mean that, that that's just kind of something interesting i've never really thought about that in in that particular sense before but you know it, it we, we get this in in um, all walks of life, right? If And uh, I know Andrew's experienced this at least once. And anybody who's ever been in a military uniform downtown, <laughs> out in public, and someone comes up to you and says, you're in the army? And you go, oh, you no, I'm in the Air Force. Educate yourself. Re reading is fundamental, guys. Like, teach your, teach your kids everybody, and yourselves to read if you can. Everybody in camouflage is in the army. Um, and you know, even in the world of it, Daniel's seen it as a waiter where he'll come up and, you know, Hey, how are you guys doing tonight? And they're like, well, last time we hear it sucked. Okay. So what? That's then why are you back? You didn't have me. <laughs> then why are you back? Right. Yep. So it, it, we all, uh, we all know what it's like to like wander into the world and have someone else represent us who is not us. And you just kind of go, oh, okay, so that's the reputation that has preceded me that has absolutely nothing to do with me. Cool. And I can imagine myself as a blue Aja sister or a white Aja or a brown Aja walking around and they're like, oh my God, you guys, you guys negotiated that war treaty. And uh, you know what? There was no war, but we're not really happy with uh, the fact that we have to pay money now and blah, blah, blah. And, and, and the blue Aja or the brown Aja, the brown Aja was like, bro, I'm just here to look at your library. Like, right. I didn't do anything with your war treaty. Sorry. Like, what? Yeah. <laughs> um, so let's get down into some nitty gritty numbers and names for Indeed. the gray Aja. Um so the Grey Aja is the third largest Aja in the White Tower, coming in just behind the Green Aja, but just ahead of the Brown Aja with roughly 140 uh, sisters just prior to the last battle. 140 uh, sisters? Yeah. Uh, it's in the Gathering Storm. There's discovered that 30, there are 31 members of the Black Aja amongst the Grey Sisters, um, but only the names of six of them are known at the time. Um, and it's in Towers of Midnight that the former Grey Sitter, uh, even Ellen, is added to the list of Black sisters that infiltrated the Aja. Um, if you want to see a breakdown in nationality for the Grey Aja, go check out the fandom wiki. It's pretty yep. good. I will tell you there are 15 unnamed um, and not that many more that are named. Uh, nine. There are nine more that are named. Like they included uh, Altara, Farmatting, Geldon, Ilian, Kandor, Mayan, and Tyr, just to say that there were none known from there. So it uh, doesn't mean that might not change as like notes are read or stuff like that, but as of the, uh, the series itself, that's it. Say, we, we have um, another Wheel of Time book coming out. So, yeah. Uh, the leader of the Grey Aja is called the Head Clerk. So every Aja has a title for their leader. Um, now, it is during the schism between the White Tower that we get the first head clerk that we are aware of uh, identified, and that is uh, Sarancha Colvin, who served in the tower uh, prior to the split and then remained as the head clerk in the tower. Um, we don't know who amongst the rebels held the office, but it is, like, it is assumed likely that Sarancha retained it after the reunica reunification of the tower. So, sorry, she was already serving in that post before the tower split, continued to right. serve while the tower was split, and then it is presumed continued to serve after the tower was split. So that's going to be the only one that we are technically aware of. Um, like we've talked about, their main interests are going to be diplomacy, jurisprudence, and justice. Um, 
So they're generally studying constantly uh, laws, customs, history, relations of every nation offer their help as political advisors to governments. So they're part Supreme Court light version and part ambassadors of sorts uh, that go out and try to negotiate um, peace between nations as the White Towers effort to try to stave off conflict amongst the nations because if they can keep all the other nations happy then it's less likely that anybody bands together and lays a siege to them again. Yeah. So, <laughs> what? Again. Yeah. Um, they Still also offer their the abilities in, in writing laws and their diplomatic skills in case of again disputes between the states. This is something they are known to do. So it's some weird cross between judge, lawyer, um, not executive, legislators for hire of sorts and, uh, and negotiators, uh, though I highly doubt they get called out to like hostage situations. So that would be, would be kind of cool, I guess. I feel like they do after or in the fourth age. Maybe. Given that they can just be like, all right, cool. Gateway right there. Oh, there you go. <clears throat> Excuse me. You there. <laughs> About to jump off the bridge. Don't do it. Um, so uh, it's a... My life, you ruined my death. It's a gray sister that is credited with uh, authoring and bringing to fruition the compact of the 10 nations. Um, this was immediately after the breaking of the world. Uh, they are also credited with uh, representing Tarvalon in the Grand Alliance during the IL War. And after the IL War, many of the Grey Sisters did try to hold together the coalition of nations, but ultimately that failed. Imagine that post-conflict with redefined borders and redefined access to military arsenals after completing a war and seeing that your uh, neighbors are potentially weak and vulnerable, suddenly you don't necessarily want to be friends because opportunistic bastards. That's really what it is. <sighs> Basically. Yeah. Yeah. Because um, that's people for you. Mm -hmm. So they can be asked by uh, local nobles or magistrates to act as judge or jury. Uh, it is noted that Bonin Mary excels as a detective, and this could also be another aspect of the grave, finding those responsible for crimes and bringing them to justice. Um, and on occasion, they do accept requests to settle disputes between the common folk. Um, this is proven by the gifts displayed in the room of Midani. Midani. So, that yeah, makes me really think makes... of like Judge Judy. You know, oh. <laughs> like oh, Judge yours Judy's is a lot a funnier than mine. I... <laughs> it makes me think of like She's the like... origin of common law. I'm not even gonna lie. That's what it makes me think of. Oh, there you go. But I could just oh. see like you know, oh yes, he has he owes me ten sheep. And I can see, like, you know, Gray Aja, Judge Judy. Is that true? You owe him 10 sheep? <laughs> Why Ooh, does your no Judge Judy I, sound like a I female John Mulaney? Uh, Is this correct? You owe him 10 sheep? Maybe. I don't know. Sometimes I sometimes I ride on terrible airlines. I don't want to <laughs> I don't want to use a real airline. So let's just make up an airline. Call it Gateway Airlines. Gateway <laughs> Airlines. Um, the Gray Aja is second only to the Blue Aja in number of Amerlin uh, rays, where the Blue Aja in the last millennium have elected eleven or had eleven elected from the Blue Aja. The Greys have had nine elected in the last millennium. Um, imagine, and then by the end, imagine that the two largest groups of people who get elected to the position <laughs> of president are the negotiators and the one with an insane amount of ambition. It's <laughs> weird, it's crazy. <laughs> it's almost uh, like that lends itself to that, yeah, weird. Almost like almost Follow every your CEO dreams, is a sociopath. Mostly because sociopaths are the only people who take CEO fucking positions. 
No. <laughs> uh, so in the <laughs> tower proper, uh, the sitters of the Great Aja were uh, Andaya Foray, Verilin, and Yukiri. Uh, and then among the rebel Aes Sedai, you had Delana, Kwamisa, Kwa and Naurisa. I'm going to say Misa, because I just like me, I guess. I don't know. Kwamisa? Um, yeah, why not? Misa, um, sure. And it is theorized that, um, that Bayonin was probably the leader <laughs> of the Greys um, in the Rebel Tower. Uh, the head clerk was not uh, omni... That They didn't make all the decisions. They were advised by council, and most people thought that, okay, well, she's the most powerful woman amongst the Grey, Aja, so obviously she just makes the decisions, but that would be incorrect because she actually had to get a consensus from that council that advised yes. her before taking any actions, which is so on brand for the Grey Aja. They're and I love it. I was about dorms. to say, if anyone would, it would be them. Like, the the diplomats, the, mm-hmm. the politicians, yeah. the they would have councils, they would have committees, they would have checks and balances out the yin-yang. <laughs> Uh, I don't know about the checks and balances part. Because I think I almost dispute it, but as I thought while you were talking, uh, like Daniel's other, on themselves. point. Well, I don't think they do necessarily, because it is definitely more akin to like an oligarchy where generally, yes, you have the person in charge that does ask the other people, but in very much a Putin st- style, the dissenters are done away with, I would imagine. They're you don't retired. have to. Yeah. To a farm um, upstate. Yeah. You don't even have to physically Especially remove them in, in, in a profession or a sphere of influence like the Grey Aja. They simply only need to be discredited. Oh, yeah. And they would no longer be trusted to be well, you know, an advisor on that council. So as investigators, I'm, I'm sure the head clerk has fat stacks of folders of dirt on everybody. The head like, clerk I, is the Batman of the Grey Aja, where they have their plan to defeat all of the other sitters uh, and uh, members of the council I, sitting in their desk. Can you tell and me, then, Leandro, they're, they're, who they're is old, this man I, you have been meeting at the North Harbor? What right? is his name? Where are you hiding the men? I, I, I gotta say, I, I'm gonna disagree with you guys a little bit. I don't... I, I think... That in order to be proficient in negotiating and diplomacy, you have to be able to hear dissenting opinions and measure Wrong. and weigh those. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. No, no I, so I agree with you, but I, I could not resist. I hear resist. what you're saying. Well, I also, <laughs> I also think it's a little bit... I, I, I think it's a little bit six in one half dozen in the other. I'm going to be the mediator between these two opinions and say that uh, I think it's actually, yes, as an effective head clerk, you would absolutely need to be able to hear people on the council who disagree with your position. 100%. Not knowing those things and not taking those things into account would be tantamount to political suicide. However, at the end of the day, Getting what you want to get done done is your primary mandate. Therefore, if there is enough dissent in the council, you make the council smaller or weed out certain people to get what you need to do done, even though if you're actually a good head clerk, you are listening to that dissent. And you are changing the things that you feel are important to do based on those dissenting opinions. At yes. the end of the day, if there's still enough dissent, there's still not checks. You balance it. Like, <laughs> sure, sure. I, I They've can, shown that they'll act that. outside. And, yeah. And that is, that is a, uh, that <clears throat> is a, a hallmark of maneuvering. If you Correct. aren't doing what I want you to do, then I'm going to I'm going to change the playing field. I'm going to add more players. I'm going to remove players. I'm going to do what I need to do to get the desired results. 
Oh, oh yeah, look at look at how Andaya in a lie, Beonin. Now I will yeah. tell all of the sitters that mm-hmm. you are going out on your own to investigate crimes not sanctioned by the Grey Aja. Yeah. What do you say to yeah. this, Beonin? <laughs> yeah. So uh look at how Andaya gained um her position as a Grey Aja sitter. Because the yep. typical process that they would go through is they'd have two or three candidates and the Aja would get together and they'd have discussions until they got to consensus on the three candidates. And then they would do a secret ballot and whoever won the secret ballot became the sitter. And Daya right. did not go through that process. Um, Sarancha just said, secret you're the sitter. Huh? So the secret ballot's a lot like a secret Santa, right? Uh, yeah, except the gift yes. sucks ass. which it still Uh, can but not as much as being appointed to a political or leadership role sucks ass um half the time right but but yeah andaya was just like a valid candidate i'm assuming and sarancha was just like uh yeah we're skipping all of this other shit because reasons and uh i'm gonna claim like limited emergency powers and you're the sitter yep so uh, they've shown that, you know, as much as they value consensus and as much as they value discussion and mediation and getting everybody kind of on the same page, when uh, much the like, you know, Athenian now. democracy or whatever, whenever the situation right. they believe, and that's the really scary part, is when they believe the situation calls for it, they will forgo their regular traditional due process to just yes. appoint someone in the position, which is terrifying. Right. Across well, the board, in any government, past, present, or future. Not completely unwarranted, and definitely not completely not understandable, but no right. less terrifying that somebody that anybody could have the power to simply just say, you are in charge of this important role. Because mm-hmm. being a sitter in the tower is no small thing. You affect the, the direction of the tower, yeah, the policy of the tower, yes. the enforcement of tower law, like you can hold up things as long as reasonably possible. I'm pretty sure the Hall of the Tower doesn't have anti-filibuster stuff in place. And I'm pretty sure knowing Aes Sedai, they will religiously weaponize and abuse filibusters. Do, and think about the fact that Which one do you think is the most be... Mitch McConnell? Uh, I don't know. I have to, to look. Think about the fact that Aes Sedai lives so much longer than regular, right. like none. I'd be curious to see who holds the record for they the, got for the longest all the time, time in the world. Indeed, who had the longest filibuster? In actual, know. like American history. Oh no, it was Strong no, Thurman. Tower. Strong Thurman. Uh, yeah, for right. our world, has the record for the longest filibuster during the uh, Civil Rights Act of, what, 57? Yes. So, yeah, Whatever. 1957. But, I don't know, it'd be interesting to see, like, I could definitely see, like, uh, well, it's easier to say who I could see not abusing a filibuster in the White Tower. I couldn't see the Yellow Aja doing it. I don't see the White Aja doing it because it doesn't logically make sense to do as a weaponized function. Uh, I could see the green Aja not really caring enough to do it because they don't care enough to train for their job anyway. So, wow. um, it's kind of like, accurate kinda like accurate. they just take <laughs> recess all the time and never show up for votes. I, I feel, um, <laughs> so I, it's abstains. probably between, it. probably between the, the red abstains. <laughs> I could see the brown Aja like unintentionally filibustering by trying to teach everybody history. So, like, a truly accidental weaponization of the filibuster. Like, as soon as a brown sitter pops up to, <laughs> to like, start talking, they all just go, fuck. The gray um, is so, like, get a brown sister up there. Yeah. But definitely, <laughs> definitely the reds, definitely the blues, and definitely the grays. Yeah. Um, I could see all three of them religiously weaponizing filibusters in the, oh, yeah. in the hall. Though I imagine, like, the armor link in at any time just be like, you're done. Sit down. Yes. Sit down. Be humble. Yeah, I can. Yeah. And, and that's that's probably the issue with a filibuster in the White Tower, though. Because if you're not actively making your point, the Omerlin's going to not 
she's going to be done with it. She's going to be like, no, oh, yeah. you're Didn't not. Didn't Strom Thurmond just start reading from the dictionary? Just, bruh, it was. Yeah. You're not going to have any ridiculous you know, recipes, phone book recitings, like nothing like that. Like yeah. the really which is which up. is ridiculous because like the filibuster when used appropriately is actually an incredibly powerful and good political tool. Oh, it's agree. just whenever everybody wants to decide that they're in the world's largest kindergarten and we're just going to stall time because fuck you and we don't agree with you. Yeah. No, the well, entire point of the filibuster I... is one hundred percent to make your point, and as long as it takes you to make your point, is fine. That's the point of the filibuster is yep. it takes you don't vote because somebody might still have a point to make. But that means yep. that you have to make a fucking point. <laughs> you can't just read yep. green eggs exactly. and ham 87 times in a row because that's not a fucking <laughs> point. Like it should mean. Should mean. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Should. But in, in when the world each... that I wish we lived in. Mm-hmm. But when each Aja wants to have the ability to sit there and read The Adventures of Jane Farstrider as their filibuster piece, no side is willing to sit there and be like, let's let's not allow this. But luckily they have the Omerlin that's, that I would assume steps in exactly. when there's not a point being made and be like, well, you know, daughter, you're just is, wasting our time. She is of all Aja's and no Aja. So she doesn't even have to worry about angering them because she can just be like, hey, hey, hey. Get to the point and sit the fuck down. <laughs> yeah. Well, and that that brings up another sort of interesting point, Andrew, that I was just getting ready to go there and you were touching on it a little bit. When it comes to a filibuster, all of the Ajas are going to want to have the ability to utilize the filibuster. So none of them are going to say abolish the filibuster unless and this is this is the benefit that the 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 I said I have that our politicians do not have they don't they don't care about being reelected mm-hmm. so they don't give a shit if people like what they do or not like all they have to do is disappear into the tower for 20 years 30 years and then come back out and everybody's like who the hell are you like it doesn't matter if the people go like on vacation not. for 50 years and come back like <laughs> dude yeah go do cat swing and just retire but it's an interesting thing how even so if if, if this were an I- issue if this were a thing all of them recognize what a powerful tool this is and none of them are going to move to get rid of it yes. because it's something that they will all need to use at some point in time. It's a tool that they all want to keep in their arsenal. Yep. Yeah. Oh, maybe they have a cloture rule, just like our Senate does. Well, the cloture rule is when the mother looks at you and goes, make your fucking point, (laughs) daughter. (laughs) Nobody gets to vote on it. The mother just goes, hey, wrap it right the fuck up. Could you imagine uh, being like a brown sister and you just like stand up to start your like little filibuster and immediately there's a closure vote called and it's like unanimous <laughs> like we don't want a history lesson right now get out no, of here. We're good. We don't need to hear this one. <laughs> yep. Uh, but, yeah. Um, so uh, I guess now is a good time to transition into well the great Aja seemingly transitioning slightly um, uh, it's either a transition or maybe an expansion, depending on how you look at it, of their detective ability slash role. And this comes in just before the last battle because the great Aja saw the weeds for traveling and were like, up and down is great, but what if we could do flat like on the ground? Yes. And people were like, actually, that's fucking great. And the great Aja was like, well, it's great that you think it's great because we fucking did it. Because it's already done. Yeah. And they put this done, to lethal, did it. lethal effect in, in the last battle. Because what they do is they open a bunch of these horizontal gateways way up in the air over the battlefield. And there's a bunch of them and other, you know, like uh, uh, strategists, uh, strategists, whatever you call them, strategic, strategic thinkers. Yeah. Um, 
other other Ajas, there's probably a green Aja sitting there in the back trying to provide input, but doesn't know as much as she thinks she does about battles. I'm really shitting on the greens right now. Um, and they're just like looking down <laughs> over this gateway, uh, you know, obviously trying to make sure they don't touch it or fall in. Uh, to see what's going on in the battle, I'm relaying information and troop movements to to everybody else, which is incredible because of the way they employ it. This is, uh, for the third age at least, the first instance of aerial reconnaissance that we see. Yes. And yep. it's, just, it's just a small fraction of a second away from somebody hurling fireballs and bail fire and hand grenades, I well, guess, through the gateway. And think about and think about the, the implications there as well, especially after the last battle. Because there is a all-encompassing treaty that encompasses everyone that teaches everyone how they should behave. And the enforcers of this treaty are the Aeel. So, <laughs> Rand in true dragon reborn fashion steps in and goes i've just done your job for you <laughs> yep congratulations everybody war is solved you can go home. <laughs> war is solved uh, but and then like like can you imagine okay but for real like can you be a, can you imagine being a gray aja sister like sitting there at the, the, the last battle, they bring up this treaty and all of the nations, including Sean Chan, are like, yeah, that's cool. We can do that. And then the greats are like, cool. Well, at least we'll still be able to mediate and, uh, you know, investigate and, and you know, <laughs> and then they're like, oh yeah, and by the way, Hey, uh, the Aiel are going to be the enforcers. You know, they're, they'll be the police force that investigates and mediates and, you know, <laughs> the crowd is like, son of a bitch. <laughs> Guys, we need to come up with something else to do. Something quick. We, we don't have, we are literally out of the job, guys. Yeah. How many of them do you think retired <laughs> right then and there? <laughs> or do you think they went to uh, went back to the tower and went, hey, you know how Leanne switched Ajas? Um, <laughs> Ooh. Do we if you could just like build, some, do we have to get uh, stilled for that? Or can we just skip that step? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, uh, I don't know. Like, it's incredible. Like, yes, I just love the idea that there's one gray Aja sitter, like, or sister sitting somewhere. To like somehow has no clue what's going on because she's like <laughs> been deep undercover detective and like Falma or something like that for years and somehow doesn't know what's going on and then like it the dragon's piece gets circulated and like the print that inevitably will come to the world <laughs> it's just reading the whole thing just being like huh I am unemployed. <laughs> just just sitting there with the with well, the copy of the dragon's they, piece and a cigarette, just being like <laughs> Well, it was fun while it lasted, ladies and gentlemen. The, the, the Matthew McConaughey, the <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and it's like, well, they forgot about the nope, they covered that there. Um well I well, at know, least we can just the, oh, oh no, shit, never they mind did that there. <laughs> oh, we could probably no, we can't. Shit. How many of them do you think said we did our job so well that it took the dragon reborn to do something we had not been able to do yet? That would have been my defense every that would have been single time. Like, yeah, how come you guys didn't do this? Well, nobody did this. Well, Randall Thor did it. Well, yeah, he's also the dragon reborn. So there's that. Oh, you mean the creator's avatar? You can go fuck yourself. <laughs> Uh, yeah. yep. Like, oh, yeah. and he also had the aid of, oh, I don't know, a world ending war. Yep. To sway everybody yeah. to his side. The, yep. the and there was some nepotism because his wars. childhood friend was the Amarlin. And his other friend was married to the Sean Chan leader. Just and his, nepotism. And nepotism the, as far as the eye can see. And the wife or and the mother of his children was fucking leading the armies. And yeah. <laughs> 
Like, yeah. That's that's what we should just do. Like the wheel of time retold as a story of rampant nepotism. <laughs> Uh, we all know that nepotism is just Tavirin in Wheel of Time. <laughs> yes, that's right. It's called Tavirin oh. because he wanted to he wanted to input nepotism and plot armor and unbelievable peculiar situations happening all at the same time with one word. It's just a rose by any other name. <laughs> that's it right there. Uh, oh. oh. But God. I mean they're pretty cool. I mean, uh so kind of going back from how they uh, altered or expanded or to some degree adapted in the last battle, their track record for Armorland seats has been pretty good. Uh, out of nine, only two were considered weak, with the rest considered anywhere from average to, to fairly strong, um, with the most recent one uh, being um, Siren Bayou, B-A-Y-U. Um, yeah, raining for on the bayou for not long at all. Five years from nine seventy nine NE to nine eighty four NE. I wonder why she only rained for five years. Because she was the one that was raised Maybe after Tamara Ospinio was murdered. Histories. Oh, um, you would definitely have to check the secret histories. Oh, she was about... Oh, she was assassinated. I figured that was it. Um, so she was secretly warned by Suwon Sanchi about the Black Aja and its relation with the deaths of the five Aes Sedai, which were t- uh, tomorrow's Oh, searches. that's right. And then she was like, huh, that's right. that is weird. And then as we find out that, uh, that Chesmal Emery revealed that uh, she induced a small group of Red Aja sisters to murder her, but don't worry, the Black Aja was not directly involved. Yep. Um, uh, so it's okay. That, uh, yeah, but Serum was about to put a stop to the vileness. So, you know, kind of like a JFK scenario there, it seems like. You know, trying to put an end to some disgusting shit well, someone going. in your own relative organization finds yeah. out and kills you. If you believe conspiracy theories and about And they were JFK. like, no, nope, I don't like that. Yeah. I don't like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, mm. But, yeah. Um, there's a whole host of named uh, Grey sisters. Uh, and they're listed with their relative sidearm strength and that weird 14 bracket 2 mechanism that I don't understand. Because uh, yep. I never tried um, some have been, uh, some were bonded by Ashaman and possibly turned. Some joined the rebels. Some remain loyalists. Um, some swore fealty to Randall Thor and led the rebel embassy. You know, um, that's right. You know, as you do. Yeah. Uh, How? Yeah. You know the the books themselves create so many instances in which. The Grey Aja should be stepping forward and being like, I got this. This this is what I do. But but I feel like it's it it's less like super cool negotiator and more the dude from Die Hard when he's like trying to negotiate with Hans Gruber and he's like, please. I ate million dollar deals for breakfast. <laughs> and he goes in there. <laughs> Hans, booby, let's chat. Let's talk. And then he gets shot. Yep. Well, what's interesting about so, like that's... so much of the Ajas um, and what they do <laughs> or don't do is that so far we, we've covered uh, the blue Aja, the red Aja, the green Aja, and now the gray Aja. So we're four out of seven. Not including the Black Aja, of course, because they don't exist in Bossings. Um, what Aja? Exactly. Um, that's how you avoid like radioactive Aja material finding its way into your team. Say. Yeah, that's that. Yeah, that's how you avoid the radioactive material finding its way into your morning coffee. Um, right. But or it generally you just seems make to be your own fucking coffee. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but it seems so far. Just looking at these four Aja, of course, 
uh, that it's either a case of taking your duties to the extreme or not doing enough duty and not really doing much with your duties as well. Because your duty is your duty and your duty is to your duty. So hopefully everybody's happy. That's a lot of duty. Yeah. <laughs> Eventually Which is what... you have to watch where you step in a game called Heroes Duty. <laughs> yeah. Because I mean, we have the Green Aja, who by per- yeah. by their by self proclaimed purpose should be the best equipped and the best prepared for the last battle, and winds up being no better equipped than anybody else, and often less equipped and ready than other Ajas. I would argue hey, that. Do you in understand terms of- how many warders they saved for the last battle? Okay, yeah, but <laughs> that was one of them, and I'm pretty sure it wasn't that much of a undue hardship on her. <laughs> All right. Uh, uh-huh. But uh, you have the green Aja who... Is, if you woo! think this head is, is carved out of stone, you should see the other one. <laughs> so they I'm should sorry. have been the most prepared for, the, for battle. Um and they wind up being no better prepared than anybody else. And even in some circumstances, less prepared for battle than the Red Aja. You have the Red Aja. But it's like, hey, police the use of the one power. And whenever you come across or hear about a male that can channel because they'll go insane and it's dangerous, bring them here so that we can try them justly <laughs> and then determine what we should do, which will 99.99, uh, just kidding, 100% of the time be gentling because fuck those guys. Um, not that it's undue caution, but whatever. It's still right, the vileness. Right. Um, and they're like, cool, kill them on site. Got you. We'll do that. <laughs> so they go well overboard. <laughs> and then you have the, the blue Aja who, you, um, as, as cool as they are, for sure, they seem to focus so much more on the outside world that they're ill-prepared for what happens within the White Tower. Um, I honestly think the Blue Aja was caught completely off guard by being completely exiled. Um, I think that, like, in the near time to it, within a couple months maybe before, they were like, yeah, this is going to happen. But they spent so much time looking out that they never looked inside. They could see the forest, but they couldn't see the tree. And unfortunately, the White Tower wasn't in a forest, so because most of them all got cut down in a lot of places. But so you have that, and now you have the Gray Aja, who has a purpose and is um, just like the the Blue Aja, a purpose that is almost completely removed from any necessary channeling involved with it. Gathering intel like the Blue Aja doesn't always doesn't necessarily involve channeling. So yes, it certainly fucking helps. Just like the Grey Aja's purpose of diplomacy and negotiation and mediation right. and jurisprudence and, and everything doesn't necessarily involve channeling per se. But you never send a detective out without you know a means to defend themselves. So there's that. Right. That that creates a good point. Like it's one of the one of the Ajas whose main charter, mm-hmm. unless they're using, I mean, unless they're using weaves like for, for investigative purposes, unless they're using weaves that help them look for fingerprints or footprints or something like that. Mm-hmm. Like, I got all I can hear is Pink Panther music. Right? Do do. I, I got to imagine that they, they have weaves that would have some sort of something to do with that. But what, I don't like what would even a weave like that entail. So that's that's know. kind of an interesting one. They don't they they would have to have their own specialty weaves for those kinds of things. Yeah. So here know. as a f- potential final thought. I'm going to propose this. Do it. Given their purpose as an Aja and what that purpose entails with the ability to be detectives, to gather information, to be purveyors of the word of law, and to be on the watch for people breaking said law. Did the Grey Aja fail the tower more than any other Aja 
for not detecting the presence of the black Aja. Ooh. Um, that's a really good question. Because it, it is honestly a question of, well, this was partially your realm to detect things, to investigate crimes and all that stuff. And there's been, as we learned throughout the books, a whole host of weird events or crimes that happen in the White Tower, things of that nature, where people have been killed, went missing, disappeared. So either, I mean, and you, and you can um, postulate that maybe it was, you know, the 31-ish Black Aja members in the Grey Aja that derailed all of that. But uh, that's no more of a handicap or less of a handicap than any I, other Aja had. Yeah. I would say they did fail the tower in this respect, but I don't believe that they failed the tower more so than anybody else because everybody else they, they they all had the same set of blinders on right it was we are the the white tower we are the purest of the pure we are so good and we're there to fight in the last battle and everything is awesome and everything we do is awesome so everything is awesome so Everything is. I cool feel like from from that perspective, I feel like the white Aja would be the fail, the biggest of the failures, for not looking at it logically and saying the black Aja is definitely here. They they have to be. There's no way there is no black Aja. That would have had to have been a logical understanding that they undertook at some point in time in their three thousand year history. I mean, I believe that so I is the also the cop out answer of blaming uh, as, as individuals or positional powers go. Uh, I think it's perfectly reasonable to blame the Amarlin seats and the keepers of the Chronicles more than any individual Aja. Because which group of people had been warned kind of knew this was going on? It was yes. like, oh, it'll, it'll, yes. it'll cause a schism. It's, it's too dangerous to let everybody know. I'm like, um, yeah, no. Uh, Actually, you know what happens to not let anybody know you motherfuckers. You know what, like, you know what happens whenever you announce to the world, "Hey, we know we have spies of this particular persuasion in our midst." They either leave or they panic, or they're really good and hide. Either way, typically the numbers of those individuals are reduced because a lot of what we see is that when their backs are against the wall or they feel that they are trapped. The Black Aja does act purely out of panic, self-preservation, and cowardice. Correct. Yes. So, but um, I do disagree with you, Josh. I would propose that of the Ajas, I don't think it is a significantly higher amount of blame, but given the purview of their self-defined purpose... I think they bear a slightly larger portion of the blame. If you work at a nuclear power plant and your job is to monitor the temperature of the reactor, and then you see the temperature of the reactor going up, and you choose to say, hey, you know what we don't need running? The water pumps that are supplying the cool water to keep the reactor cool, <laughs> you have some culpability there. Everybody else that was there that could see stuff going on and had hands to play. Yeah, I definitely didn't just watch the Three Mile Island documentary on Netflix. It's fantastic. Go watch it. The <laughs> event uh, wasn't fantastic, but it's a good docuseries. You do take oh, was, a little I you bit. Were, you had just watched uh, uh, Deepwater Horizon. <laughs> You know, that's, that's, oh God, that's such a good movie. Now I got to rewatch Deepwater Horizon. Is it on Netflix? I have no idea. Oh, it's so good. But yeah, if I you watched it, it um, once and I was so unimpressed with the fact that they went ahead and hired Mark Wahlberg and uh, Kate Hudson to play those two people who are the like heroes of the story who look absolutely nothing like in any way shape or form mark Wahlberg or kate hudson and i was just like jesus christ eh, they got the story across though 
They did. In a very, I'm sure, dramatized and, oh, and everything way, of course. Because you can't keep most people watching something that's boring. Right. Um, myself included. I'm not I'm not saying Wait, holier that than that. We don't have very many watchers. Yeah, yeah I'd, I'd imagine. I actually deliberately ah, try to keep my energy to, low. We just need to go ahead and spruce this up. I just need to walk away from more uh, from more explosions. That's what we need to do. I'll, I'll work on that in editing. All right, cool. And by work on that in editing, I'll think about it and forget about it. There you go. That's, but yeah, that's... Daniel, what what are what are your thoughts here uh, on the question? Does the Gray Aja own any higher culpability for the in, uh, for the infiltration of the black to- uh, the black tower into the white tower, the black Aja into the white tower? <laughs> You know, I would say no. I don't think that they have more capable, more culpability. Um, I do also certainly think they have no less culpability than anyone else. But I think that everyone in the White Tower has to take responsibility for the fact that everyone in the White Tower put their head in the sand and said, I'm not listening, I'm not listening, I'm not listening. Um, because even, uh, because again, even if you don't know for a fact, because you have actual proof that the White Tower is being infiltrated by the Black Aja, you know that Dark Friends are out there. You know it. You know for a fact that the, the Dark Friends are out there. Dark Friends are everywhere. Uh, And even though they're not, like, crazy proliferated into different places, they exist. So the assumption that there are zero Aes Sedai who are also Dark Friends is just ego. It's just narcissism, and it's just impractical. Uh, And so, again, I don't necessarily think that the white or the gray or the red or anything along those lines has more responsibility for that but but i also have to admit that all of them just bear such a responsibility for allowing it and being a (laughs) part of it and just sitting there being like that it's just (laughs) such horseshit yeah i mean that that's fair i think there are reasonable (laughs) arguments definitely for like they're no more at fault because every aja did uh, through uh, incompetence, through ignorance, through just pure inability, did allow themselves to be infiltrated by the Black Aja. It yep. did happen to everyone collectively. And there was yep. this giant collective mentality of, but we fight the good fight. There's no way that there could be bad people here, um, which is definitely that holier than thou mentality that often leads to the fall and ruin or at least severe suffering yes. uh, of many entities. Um, it's a tale as old as time. A song, song as is... old as rhyme. Thank you. Black I couldn't remember if it was of rhyme. and the tower. <laughs> Black Aja and the tower. White tower. Yes. Because we don't have any of uh, Dark Friends in the in the Black Tower. We got rid of all of them. Once. Yeah. And it'll happen again and again and <laughs> again and again. Because at the Black Tower, we go, oh, we know there are Dark Friends here. And we go find them. We go find them and we go kill them. <laughs> there isn't a... Uh, there isn't a no there's definitely no dark friends in the tower here mentality there's a oh when we find them we gonna kill them mentality right yeah yep um as a quick aside just because i do i do think it's really cool um and we just learned about in our live chat from adelona over at north harbor podcast if you're listening to this and you haven't gone back to if you're listening to this when it comes out publicly, uh, if you haven't gone back to North Harbor Podcast and looked on, uh, I believe it's the 24th, the night of the 24th, and checked out their episode with uh, an amazing guest, um, <laughs> definitely go and do that. If you know London River, um, and I don't mean the river in London, 
Uh, this, if you're trying to search who it is, um, you're probably going to get save search flagged if you have it turned on, which is how I just learned that the Black Tower account doesn't have it turned on. You're welcome. Um, go and check out North Harbor Podcast uh, episode for that. Um, I've heard that the, and by heard, I mean, Adelorna has said that the YouTube video is an absolute delight and treat that you cannot miss. Um, and while you're there, go and check out all of their other episodes because they're pretty fucking great people. Uh, so definitely go pretty awesome. and check out North Harbor Podcasts. And if you can't find it, uh, definitely find them on Twitter and they can draw you a map. Twitter, Discord, yeah. wherever. Wherever you can find them. If you can find Adelona or her fantastic co-host, um, definitely go and check them out because uh, they do great stuff. Do. And it's about the Wheel of That's Time, true. too. Mm -hmm. so. It is. It is a wheel of time. Why is the map so, so small? <laughs> we don't talk about that. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't need. I don't need sleep. I need. I need a map to North Harbor. <laughs> it is a very tight North Harbor. How about you just chill out? Point very like a tiger. Tarvalon. North Tar North Harbor's come in all shapes and sizes. Is, that is also true. We don't but shame. This particular one is very tight. Toy. Toy. Okay. Gray Aja, my final thoughts. They are, like anyone else in the White Tower, important, maybe overly self important. Um, they provide a, a, a service and a function that is helpful and valid to the rest of the world. Um, how many wars have they staved off by, you know, negotiating, talking everybody down? How many uh, cases, how many times did they see justice dispensed properly because they were there to over, overlook and, and make sure everything was great? It, it, it's good. Um, I would say at least once. At least once. They, they have, yeah, at least once. And if they say just one person. Um, it is, it is interesting to me to see that they have already sort of started transitioning into a new purpose at the last battle. You know, we've got, they, they start, uh, they start specializing in traveling weaves and they start doing all these kinds of things and they are able to do the, the horizontal, you know, and so it just, it's, it's real interesting, huh? The, the, the horizontal, horizontal mambo? mambo. That's right. Do they mambo Italian? And so it's just really interesting. Pop out Americana. Mambo number five. Um. I like what old Dirtbeard says. Know, uh, they run the Zoom meetings now. They run the Zoom meetings. They're the purveyors right. of distance yeah. learning. It's fantastic. I love it. I love it. Um. No, I just I. It's interesting that they uh, they seem to have a new direction going in where there's a lot of there's a lot of other people in the White Tower that don't yet have that new direction for the Fourth Age. So I, I like that about the Gray Aja, and it's also fun. I, I like that we're doing these because the Gray Aja is one that um, at first glance you can just go, okay, yeah, diplomats and politicians, but when you kind of dig in, you see there's there's more there than meets the eye initially. And so it's real, it's fun to, to dig in and, and chew on these topics. So Black Aja in disguise. We were able to do it. So uh, thank you everyone for being here. Thank you for listening. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching us. Do you have any YouTube other final so thoughts? You can see our beautiful faces. Do we have other I thoughts? I don't have any other final thoughts. Oh. No. I don't and even know what, what thoughts allowed. are. We I'm hope that you've them. enjoyed this deep dive on the gray Aja. And we hope that uh, you walk away from this recording just a little bit more insane than you were. And we hope you've enjoyed this uh, dispensation of your weekly dose of taint. So from all of us here at the Black Tower, I am Josh, your Sorovan Mahale. I am Andrew, 
your Bajan Mahale. <laughs> and I am Daniel, your Amin Khan Mahale, realizing that we did not introduce ourselves at the beginning of this episode. We didn't! We just jumped right in! Hell yeah! Uh, you mean jumped right in? We spent 17 minutes talking about nothing Wheel of Time related. Shh. <laughs> But that's okay. Beautiful that is, that's, why, that's why I that put the names on the screen. We love you very much. That's right. For coming that's and right. listening to both our ramblings and some of the cool, good things that we say. Um, <laughs> and from all of us here at the Black Tower, we hope that you are having a wonderful morning. And in case we don't see you again, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. <laughs> Trouble just fitting in.